Now, the final thing that I'm to announce this is, is something rather of a world import, but for some of you I trust it shall hold some importance, it certainly does to us. Very recently, as you would count time, we were all of us quite surprised and startled to suddenly receive a transmission from none other than that great prophet once physically alive on your planet called Muhammad. Now this one is attained to a far greater stature than that when he was the prophet. A master, if you will. And it was quite startling. For you see, uh, when one inhabits the realms of light as we do, and that you all do when you're out of your bodies, mind you. I'm certainly not trying to imply some kind of exclusivity. That's nonsense. It is not uncommon, no matter what you might be in the midst of, that suddenly you're startled by what would appear to be uh, like a, well, like a television screen above, suddenly drawing your attention to it. Generally, we drop what we're doing and observe. But it's usually coming from a grander realm. Only one coming from a higher realm has got the power to do that, you see. So that alone is good reason to note it. And we do, and we do. Well, we stopped and found this great one, giving us the salute of the brotherhood, heart, head in hand. And then, saying to us all, I can be silent no longer, he said. Too many shed blood in my name. I have been in deep contemplation and communion with the great Lord Jesus. I have gone to him and said, how have you dealt with this thing? that almost as soon as you had physically left your body, they began to change your story, your words, forgetting your spirit, and indeed, offending your very meaning and essence by their actions said to be done in your name. An extreme example, of course, being the Inquisition in Europe. The master never dropped his gaze for a second, said Muhammad. But he looked more brilliant than ever. And he said, it has been one of the greatest sources of my own growth since leaving that realm. For every single time I've done, I am aware of it. And I send the light more brilliantly directly to that place, that heart, and that mind. Letting them know the truth of who I truly am, that they might, somewhere in their beingness, note the disparity. That what is being claimed as so-called Christian has got nothing to do with me. If so be it, it lacks love compassion, understanding, patience, forgiveness, and gentleness. Muhammad said that he lowered his head, but he realized he was getting an infinite teaching. And he thanked the Great One and repaired himself to the deserts of Saudi Arabia. For well, he once had been in that life when he was Mohammed on earth. And suddenly there came a great revelation unto him. And he knew that he had to do the same thing. For too many were those who claimed to be doing what they were doing in the name of Mohammed, Islam, the religion supposedly that he began. So from that moment, my friends, he's been doing that. 
Now, on the one hand, some of you might think, oh, good, it's about time. You know, really, I, I shall sleep better tonight. Not so fast. The very ones who are doing those things that they claim are done in the name of a holy man, no good and well that's what they are doing, they are doing because they want to do it. Not because they are working against their own innards, and they're but following the words of their great spiritual leader. That's nonsense and they know it. Just as those who claim to be Christians, when they persecute you, know deep inside they are not walking the pathway of the Christ. So what happens? A polarity ensues. And they separate out from him, if ever they were a part of him. And suddenly they are group apart now, aren't they? For he does not claim them, and they cannot claim him. And so what have we got here? But a different breed, don't we? We've got a breed of beings who call themselves followers of Islam, Muslims, but who are indeed from a place and a time wherein they observe no laws and only called sacred whatever they felt was a reason to do the evil that they do. How can you use this information? By calling to the great Muhammad. For you see, by cosmic law, though he's got the prerogative of visiting, and he has, the more he is invited and invoked, the more he may do so. So what I'm telling you is that if you invoke him, if you call to him, then he can and shall come, go directly to those that most are the antithesis of the very things he stood for, and basically challenge them in that name and say, I am he who you say you follow, but you do not follow me. I denounce your actions, and if you will not drop them immediately, I denounce you. And therein, you see, is a judgment brought, and that is going on as we speak. So it is one more thing you can do to help to accelerate the inevitable which is that these who claim to be Muslims or followers of Muhammad must come to defeat. For they are followers of none but some very, very dark angels who long ago refused to serve humanity when they were informed that the divine plan would require them to do it. Lucifer himself being the first who when he saw and heard that the Lord of Lords said, You, my angelic wonders, though glorious in the extreme of beauty and light, are asked to serve humanity. These fledglings who are growing bit by bit, life by lifetime. And he was outraged. I, Lucifer, the son of the morning, serve these. And he departed the great court like a fireball, very calmly. The Lord called to him. I speak of the Lord Sanat Kumara and said, Lucifer, and called him as a father might call his son who left in a huff. Lucifer would not come and for the first time was disobedient. The Lord called him again, Lucifer, come, it is my will. Again, nothing. A third call was issued, and to this came a rumbling from far away, a terrible, terrible rumbling. And out of it came a gruff and rough voice that simply replied, I will not serve. And that has been the mark of every fallen soul ever since. 
Where will you doth serve, beloved? Therein you may find yourselves not in light. Look into your lives. Look into your hierarchical structures. Look at those that are there to guide you, either physically or spiritually, and watch, seek to see where you will not serve. You have all of you got masters far greater than you in every way. How is it you would not want to serve one of these when, well, all we can say is we clamor to. We can't wait to be in the presence of those glorious ones that we acknowledge as our superiors, that we might be as they, loving and light. This earth, my dear ones, for centuries has propagated many, many, many philosophies, all engendered by the egocentric mind of man, the human wit. But it is not the thing that guides one into the heaven worlds, and that much I shall tell you openly. So, be appraised. Be appraised by your own appraisal. Appraise yourselves. Where do you fall in that wonderful, wonderful line? Wherein are you not serving? And I am not referring again to serving other mortals particularly. I don't mean that at all, dear ones. Do not mistake me, please. I'm not referring to going tomorrow to your offices and, uh, as they say, kiss it up to that boss that you can't stand. I'm not saying that. That would disgust me. For there'll be reasons that you don't like them, no doubt. No doubt very good reasons, I would think. I am simply saying that there'll be places in your life where you know that your service is necessary, needed, and that it is beautiful service, that it would improve things. They would lighten loads and burdens. This is the service that I'm referring to. That service that is righteous unto your own heart, not anyone else's. But that you simply don't done, that's all. You've not gotten around to it, have you? A little slow, are we? <laughs> A little lazy, are we? Don't want to turn off that television set. Or whatever. God bless you all. How well we know, we've done the same, which is why we speak of it now. We can see the folly. <laughs> oh, well, you can't say we didn't tell you. God bless you, dear one, God bless you. You'll all make it to heaven one way or the other, soon or late, up to you. <laughs> but until then, we are keeping you in our hearts and souls, loving you as always, whether you serve or whether you don't. For we can't help it. We love you that much and more. God bless you all. God bless you all.